right, we're live. Hey everyone, welcome to another Webflow workshop. I'm your host, Nelson. This is episode 119. The topic today is we're rebuilding an Adobe Muse web page inside of Webflow. So this stream is dedicated to those from the Muse community who are looking into Webflow as a place to migrate to. And I wanna make sure that we answer as much questions as possible so you understand what Webflow is. And to help me towards the end of this stream, uh, I have Jason from MuseGrid.com and also an ex-Muser, uh, Chip, who will be helping me answer questions uh, when it comes to comparing Muse to Webflow. All right, um, yeah, so if you're new here, these streams are uh, meant to help you uh, learn something new and help you experiment and inspire you to go beyond your self-perceived limits. Do more than you think is possible, all right? Uh, how we'll go through the stream is we'll have, uh, first we're gonna go over three things, okay? Uh, three very important things. We're going to talk about the box model and then we're going to talk about responsive design inside of Webflow and also a cool feature that not many Muse community members know about, which is the Webflow share link. All right. After I go over those three things, then we'll start the build, which is rebuilding a home page inside of Webflow. And then lastly, after that, we'll have time for live Q&A with Jason and Chip. Sounds good? Let's get to it. All right, so let me show my screen real quick. All right, the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is the box model. Now, um, the box model, we have this article in uh, university.webflow.com. Okay, a lot of stuff you can pick up about Webflow here, but also about uh, web design in general. Okay, so if you look at the box model, what it is is you're not positioning elements on the canvas of Webflow anywhere you want. You follow the web standard of the box model, which is everything lays out kind of like, um, kind of like in a Word doc. You know how everything is uh, to the left, and it then floats down to the left, and the next line goes down to to the left. But then you can like position it in different ways, but it's not position absolute. That's how Webflow treats. Uh, all the elements when you put in an uh, element inside of Webflow, okay? You can't just put it anywhere you want, like in, say, uh, PowerPoint or slides or something like that, because it's not gonna look as good when it comes to a mobile responsive design, okay? And so you can watch this video, it's really short uh, to understand what the mo box model is, okay? And when it comes to that, when it comes to uh, pos uh, positioning, you wanna position everything inside of Webflow, so it's responsive. Okay, this video, all right, this is just a screenshot of the video that's actually up here, all right. All right, and let's talk about fluid responsiveness. So this this old uh, blog post in 2014 by Front or Front, um, they talk about what's responsive versus adaptive, and they have cute little gifts to explain it. And so responsive is very fluid, it just like, it grows with the screen size, no matter what screen size it is. What adaptive is, it searches for each screen size and then it conforms to it after, after the fact that the screen is uh, stretched or made thin, okay? And you have the flow, that makes sense. And I'll, I'll put this link in the chat room. I'll put these links um, in the chat room later, but uh, this explains what it is. And in Webflow, you can use either static units, which is uh, exact pixel sizes, like 800 pixel width, or you can use, what I like to use, is more fluid units or relative units, which is percentages, VW, meaning viewport width, or VH, which is viewport height, All right? Um, and so it's better to use relative units instead of static because look what happens if you thin it out these static units don't move at all. Whereas you're using percentages, you're using the percentage of the screen size, of the screen width, okay? And this talks a little bit about breakpoints, and we're gonna get into breakpoints in uh, Webflow during my build later on. But yes, you can create web uh, breakpoints inside of Webflow and make everything more fluid, all right? Uh, lastly, I wanna show you, before we get started with the build, 
is, let's see here. All right, so last thing I want to show you guys is the share link, okay? So this is, uh, this is a Webflow web page, okay? And this is the Webflow UI. And say I want to get help with this, okay? I don't have to send my project files to any, uh, to someone, to a friend to help me out and figure out what's broken about this or what I can do better. Uh, I can just go to my project settings at the top left, okay? And I can click on this guy, right? Actually, I can clear and click on this guy, share, and turn this on. And now I can copy this URL and send it to anyone. And so if I go to it, there we go. If I go to it, I'm presented with the full Webflow UI. So this is from the view of your friend, okay, that you're sending the URL to, okay? I can mess around, go through any page I want, mess around with the styles, but this is a read-only mode. So whatever I do here, I can set changes to anything I want, but these changes never get saved. So you can do like a screencast or a GIF, GIF, or um, what have you to debug or try to help your friend uh, figure out what the problem is, okay? And in the Webflow community, we pass these URLs uh, frequently on our forums whenever we need to get help with something, whether it be a style, interaction, or whatnot. So yeah, uh, this is very useful for debugging and helping with styles. Okay, uh, yeah, so those three things, the box model, uh, fluid responsiveness, and the share link. All right, hopefully uh, that helps you guys out. Let's see here. Are we good, are we good? No sound here, just loading video stream. Everyone good? Is my stream working? Let me check. People are saying, okay, I think we're good. All right, moving on, let's do this. So here is the page that I will be rebuilding. This one right here. All right, so this is from um, musegrid.com. So they have a bunch of Muse templates and I've just browsed, quickly browsed through some and said, okay, which one can I show you guys how to rebuild inside of Webflow as fast as possible, okay? So let's break this down. We have a top nav, and the top nav is fixed to the top. We have a 100% height or 100VH viewport height uh, section with a background image. We have centered content, two uh, call to action buttons. And we go here, we have a thin banner-like uh, row or section. Then we have three rows right here. This one has two columns. And right here, we have a parallax scrolling type of effect. Okay, if I have time, I'll see if I can do that for you guys. Um, and then we have a light box with the video. And three columns. So I think I'll do as much as I can, but not uh, the whole thing. Just to give you a, a preview of what Webflow can do. Also, yes, I will do this light box right here with um, a picture gallery. There we go. Uh, yeah. And maybe if I have time, the footer with the map. But I want to try to get as too much as possible. And if you notice, this is a one pager, so this clicks down to each section. I'm going to show that off as well. Cool. So I'm going to have the site on my screen right here and then build it right here in front of you guys. All right. Let's get started. This is our blank canvas. Uh, really quickly, I'm going to show you the Webflow UI, just give you a, a short little tour. Uh, on the left, you have what I call like uh, what I call it's like a box of Lego bricks, okay? So you have everything you need um, that you would type in in Webflow. Everything, uh, I mean, type in to make a web page, okay? All your HTML tags are right here. You have your layouts, your typography, you have your images, videos, forms, and components, okay? So there's a lot of stuff. And then at the top, you have your responsiveness, you have your desktop, and then you have your tablet and everything in between. You have your mobile landscape and everything in between. 
And lastly, you have your portrait. Okay, so that's how you handle responsiveness. I'll go into that more clearly later on. And then on here, on the right side, you have almost every CSS property you can play around with, okay? So it's all here. You have your, you have your box model right here. You have your positioning, typography, background, border, it goes on and on and on. And Webflow is like a rabbit hole because you learn one thing and then just keeps going. You learn something else and you learn something else. And it, there's so much beyond what you just see on the surface, okay? Um, Navigator is kind of like Photoshop where you have your, uh, your element tree or DOM tree. And then you have your style manager where you uh, create style names. And then interactions. I'm going to play around with parallax scrolling later on uh, if we have time. But yeah, so that's it. Let's get to it. So first thing I want to do is we're going to build a nav bar. Okay, and here we go. This is going to go quick. Follow with me. I'm going to drag a, nav a nav bar in here. Okay, and there we go. I have my nav bar and I've already uh, save my swatches and to do that all you have to do is just type choose a color and then press the plus sign right here to save a swatch but i've already uh, saved myself some time so i'm gonna let's see here what color was it i think it was this one right here so oh that's for my typography let me delete that okay for my background i want it like that but let's go ahead and play around with the opacity real quick something like let's go 50. all right and so this is creating CSS on the fly. I'm creating real CSS without having to type it, okay? So that's done. Uh, I don't have a logo, so I'm gonna delete my logo. And I have these three links that I already made for me. And so this link right here, I'm gonna color it white, right there. And it already gave me a class name of nav link. And when I hover over it, actually, you know, I'm gonna make it small, 12 pixels. Yeah, like 18 on the lead uh, line height. And when I hover it, hover on it, it should change to a color of, let's say like, like that. Let's, there we go, like that. Okay, so I've already made a class. And so you can probably see the color change just a bit. All right, so now I can apply this same class. Rather than having to style each element individually, I can just take that same style, that same style class, and apply it. So if you can see here, it says nav link, click it, it applied. Go to the next one, click it, and apply. And uh, we have home about, let me put services real quick. And I can just copy this element and paste it. One, two, three, and just replace the content within this link. Contact. Awesome. Okay. Now, last thing, I need to make it sticky to the top. And easy, easiest way to do that is to, yeah, I'm going to grab my nav bar, click on fixed, and set it to the top. We're done. Nav bar complete. And here's a cool thing. We've already made it responsive for you. Okay. So check this out. It's already hamburger menu. We've already done the coding for you. You just need to style it. Okay, and what does it look like in between? Well, there you go. Okay, so nav bar and nav responsiveness complete. All right, all right, let's keep going. We're going to put a section. Okay, so from the add elements panel, I'm going to put in a section, and this section is going to be 100% vh okay so 100 vh that i put here that vh means viewport height all right and i'm going to call this hero i'm going to scroll down here and we need a background image and so i've already uploaded the images to webflow and all it is is just going to this assets manager clicking upload or you can drag all of your assets in uh, from your desktop into the browser all right so let's go ahead and take this one Let's position it, cover, center that, no uh, repeating, we're good. All right, and now I wanna center the content. Let's see here, let's go ahead and put in a container. So when I drag in a container, this container is a pre-styled 940 width 
a 940 pixel width div with margin auto on both sides. So that's what sensor centers it horizontally. Now I want to um, I want to vertically center it, and I would need to use flexbox. So if I go on hero, I can set this to flexbox and set it right there. And this guy right here, I want to stretch it out, and there we go. All right. And now inside of here, let's go ahead and add in our H1. So under typography, I'm going to drag this here. And this one is called Breeze. And then we have an H2. So I'm going to drag another heading. And this time it's going to be H2. This one is Make Awesome Websites Quickly and Professionally. Period. And let me add a, uh, this is way too big. So I'm going to need a div to make it smaller. I want to put a div that's smaller actually. So I'm going to drag in a div block in here. And I know I'm going really fast, especially if you're new to Webflow, but I'm just showing you how easy it is to build something inside of Webflow without coding. So hero content, so I can name my classes whatever I want. Uh, max, let's say 550 pixels. And there we go. And let's put one more, um, let's just put some buttons. So I'm gonna put a button, and what a button is, is just a pre-styled anchor tag. Uh, let's see here, this one will contact us. Copy paste. And this one says bye. And there we go. Go. So this one right here is going to push off to there. And just like I said how the box model works, I'm pushing everything down to the left in the next row. But links, they're already display inline, so they stay in the same row. That's what inline means. Okay. So this contact us is a color of this and a border radius of, say, 5. So we have that rounded edge, if you can see it here. And I can take this right here, give it the same style. But if you look here, it's gray. So I can give it a combo class. Okay. So I'm going to say secondary. So now we have, we have that parent class. And now we're adding a second class because we're just changing one little thing. And there we go. Okay. Now I'm going to go back here where the parent class is. I'm going to set a hover state because both of them, when they hover, they turn red. Okay. So now if I click out of it, red, and this one should be turning red as well. But it did it. Where's my hover state? There we go. Okay. There we go. They both turn wet, red. Cool? So there, we're done with the hero row. Okay? We're done with this. Let's scroll down, and we're going to do this. This should be quick. This is just a thin bar. Okay? Very simple. So we're going to go back here to our navigator, collapse everything, and let's drag in a section under the hero. So I'm going to bring the hero above it. There we go. And there we go. So let's call this blue section. All right. And this blue section, the background is going to be that. Let's add some padding to the top and bottom. Say, yeah, 40 is good. Yep, I'll say 40. All right, and let's go ahead, put some text in, and we want to center that. So on the blue section, I'm going to center it, and this one says, build amazing websites. Fast. All right. Uh, yeah. And then I need to put a button right next to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on button. And so now I have a button. And they're not in the same row. I want to put them on the same row. So what I can do is use Flexbox and tell it to be centered like that. So now they're all in the same line. And they're vertically centered and horizontally centered. All right. Let's push this away from that text. And I think that one is bold, All right? And now this, let's call it a red button. And let's say 
here it's red make that border radius 5 and that hover state turns green so hover state turn the background to green and we're done with that one okay so if we preview right now so this is my preview button right here if I preview I can see what I've built and it's only been what 10 minutes or so 15 yeah all right All right, so next one, let's go to the next section. So this section right here, uh, this is super simple. I'm gonna put a container and then we're just gonna have three rows. And this second row though, will have two, uh, yeah, it will have two columns. So let's go ahead and do that. Add a new section, I'll put it at the top first and then move everything above it. There we go. So we have this next section right here and what are we gonna call it? Okay, we're just gonna call it section for now. Okay, add some padding on top and bottom. I'm gonna say 50. And inside there, we're gonna bring in a container. Cool. And now I'll, I want three rows. And the three rows, okay. So the first row, let's go ahead and do this. The first row, I'm gonna put a div block. So I can just copy paste everything within it. So this first div block, we're gonna give a heading of H4. Uh, H3. Oh, I can hardly see it. Let's go ahead and fix that. I'm going to select all H3 headings. So if you're an H3, you're going to get this style. I think it's this one right here. Yep. So this one is what? Let's put on a paragraph right here. This, uh, this one right here. Let's call it. Give it a color of this. There we go. We'll just leave it lorem ipsum for now. And what I can do is I'm going to copy this div block. Okay. Actually, give it a class name first because I want to style it. So I'll give it um, content row. And I'm going to push it away from each other because if I put a row uh, right next to it, it's going to bump up. I, I don't want them to bump into each other. I want them to have some space in between. So now I can just copy this content row and paste it two times. And there we go. Okay, and so this one is how, and this one is who, and why is Gamora. And then we, in this content row, I wanna put columns. So I can drag in a columns component and I can set this however I want, but for now it looks like it's 50-50. And then I can just drag in my content. I'm gonna put this here put this here to hello on the, oh whoops hello I'll put this there we go and then where's my paragraph there it is there we go and now I want to drag in a image that I've already uploaded which is this one and there we go so something like that yeah all right let's keep moving because we can style this forever we can uh, go to the nitty really fine details of everything but um i want to just go to sh i just want to keep going to show you the power of webflow and see if i can answer any questions towards the end okay so let's go to the next section now this next section is going to be pretty cool okay um i'm gonna have a light box here some content but the clouds that are moving that's really cool so let me show you how we can do that without coding or plugins or or widgets or anything like that. Okay, so let's drag in our next section. I'm gonna put the section here, right there, drag it down. Okay, so this one we're just gonna call it clouds. Okay, or eh, clouds section. Better. All right, and let's give it some padding real quick. Uh, actually, no, no padding, because I wanna add the clouds image on top. So I'm going to set the position to relative because I'm going to have the clouds uh, position absolutely on top. And I'll show you that soon. And I think the color is this one. I hope that's the one. And on top, let's go ahead and put another div block. And this one is going to be our clouds. And our clouds are going to be positioned absolute. 
set to full and that should be pointing to this cloud section yep it is all right and now this cloud section we need to put some content so i'm going to bring in a container into here there we go and in that container let's go ahead and center everything so i'm going to put center and everything's going to be centered all the text all the inline images and whatnot need to be centered and one of those things is this light box so i'm dragging a light box and whoop, put the light box in here there we go and so this light box all i have to do is change the thumbnail image where are you at there you are so i have the thumbnail image and i can replace it let's just use this one so replace the thumbnail image and then the media let's go ahead and copy the url uh that one um okay there we go so i can just copy the url to the video click on the video icon paste the vimeo link and there we go i already have a light box so if i click on it if I click on, oh, if I click on it, oh, I love technicals. <laughs> oh, it's because I'm clicking on clouds. There we go. This center right here has to be positioned. My Z index has to be higher than the clouds, <laughs> higher than the clouds. All right, there we go. Because I've been click, I was clicking on the clouds element, not the actual light box. There we go. And immediately I have a light box. And there we go. All right, let's keep putting uh, stuff in here. So this guy right here, let's go ahead and put some padding, something crazy like 120. And okay, the next part is let's add a heading H. Let's try H4 and call it demo reel. Put some paragraph text. And now we can do our columns again and do three columns this time. And now we can put in, uh, I can put in a text where it's bold. So I'm going to call this bold text right there. And this one says build fast. And then we'll put a paragraph in here. Copy, paste that three, two times. Produce effectively. And lastly, easy to use. Okay, and this one needs some space below, so let's push that down. Um, let's push it right there. So I'm holding Alt when I'm dragging the box model around. All right. And cool. Yeah. So lastly, I want to show you that parallax scrolling effect. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and I have my clouds right here. And so this clouds, I need the background image of clouds. Where are you? There you are. Nope, wrong one. There we go. There we go. And yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I want to move this image I want to move this image left and right when I'm going scrolling up and down so if you look here the clouds are moving left and right okay so here's how I'm going to do it I'm going to go to interactions right here okay and I'm going to go to page trigger while page is scrolling I'm going to play a scroll animation. So this is how we do our like JavaScript type of things, JavaScript interactions and whatnot without coding. It may seem a little bit complicated, but we have so much documentation to help you with the basics of this that uh, after a couple of hours or, um, you know, or a day of watching university.webflow.com, you'll see it's easy to pick up, okay? And if you need help with anything, 
the community is there for you. Our growing and helpful community is at forum.webflow.com. Please introduce yourself there. Uh, ask your questions there. It's a really, really good community. Okay, so I'm gonna go to scroll animation and we're gonna call this scrolling clouds. All right, and I'm already selected on the clouds element. So what I can do is press plus and let's scale this up a bit real quick. And where am I at? Let's see here. Where am I at when I'm here? Okay, so this is probably at 98. So when I get here, so at 54, you can drag this down to 54. When the browser's at 54% the, all the way down, this is when I want to set my scale up a bit. All right. And also right here in the scale, I want to scale that to one. Is it 1.1 on both of them? Oh, 1.2. So I'm setting both to 1.2. And also right here, I'm going to add another one where it moves. So I'm going to move it to the right a bit. So something like this. Actually, let's see fluid. Um, negative 10%. Okay, let me go up and down on the keyboard. Okay, so 10% is good. And then when I get here, it's going to move to zero percent actually let's move it further uh, okay so positive 10 yeah okay cool so now if you notice it's kind of outside uh the box so i'm going to fix that soon but here let me show you what live preview does okay so if i scroll up and down the clouds are moving all without coding is because we set the parameters for when it starts and when it ends, what it looks like, all right? And now let's go ahead and fix that real quick. I'm gonna close out of the animation, go back to my cloud section, and I'm gonna set an overflow of hidden. So I'm cropping to only what the section has. So now if we go here to the preview, there we go. We just did parallax scrolling without coding. And yeah. All right. So I did a, a couple of things. You know, it's not the full home page, but I just wanted to give you as quick of a tour as I can of Webflow and the power of it. Uh, and I really want to get to your questions. So let's go ahead and um, do one more thing that's super important thing. Um, that both uh, Chip and Jason has mentioned to me that uh, the Muse community is wondering about is what does responsive, what does responsive design look like inside of Webflow? And here we go. We're going to get into it. So the desktop is done. Now, what do we want it to look like in the next breakpoint, which is tablet? Well, I already showed you right here that uh, the hamburger menu uh, is given to you guys immediately. Okay, so you can style that however you want. You can click open menu and start styling everything based on this breakpoint. But uh, yeah, so let's let's go here. I'm gonna open the menu and this menu button right here. Let's click on it. There we go. So this menu button right here, I'm going to style it a different color because when the menu is open, let's make it that color. So notice I have a class name already and when it's open. So when I close it and go back to menu button, that open is gone. So if I open it again, that's cool. There we go. Okay. Let's just make sure. All right. Let's just keep going. All right. So this only happens on this breakpoint down. So how CSS works is called CSS cascading style sheets. It cascades down. So anything I do with these styles from here goes down to mobile landscape and mobile portrait. It doesn't go back up to the desktop. So whatever I do, he do here as for the styles, it doesn't happen to desktop, only everything below. If I move elements or if I make changes to the content that happens to all breakpoints. Okay. That's not styles, that's content changes. There's a difference, okay? So I'm gonna mess with around with this nav menu style. 
I'm going to use the same color. And there we go. Let me open it again. Nav menu. Oh, that's. It. There we go. Change this to. There we go. Cool. All right. And let's make these bigger. And using my keyboard to go up and down the values. So something like that. All right, cool. Now let's close that menu out. And so this one, let's make this just, yeah, let's just make this a different color just, just for fun. Nope, that's not good. Yeah, let's do it like that. So just to show you what, what I mean is when I go here, notice how it has this icon of a tablet. But if I go here, it's back to white because this has an icon of desktop. So I didn't affect any styles going up, only down. So if I go down here, it's still that blue. If I go here, it's still that blue. But I can change these now to this. And so now this portrait right here, mobile portrait and mobile landscape will share that color, but not here and not here. Okay. So that's a little bit about responsiveness. And you know what? Right here, I want to make a fix because this way to, it's too much to the left. It's bumping to the left. So let's add some padding and there we go. So this padding happens on both breakpoints. Okay. We scroll down here. Same thing here. There's too much. So what I can do is either style it by itself or reuse that same class name okay so whatever i do at the top happens at this one because they're sharing the same style okay so watch what happens if i go like this see both of them are moving at the top and bottom okay and it happens there all right and let's go ahead and look at what these columns do okay it naturally floats to the left okay let me show you something on the settings right here you can set it to what the col how the columns react on certain breakpoints okay on the tablet two column on the phone landscape rows and phone portrait rows or I can mix and match you know however you want okay if I go here it's rows or I can go back and it's like that and I think because the content still fits I'm gonna leave it like that if I go here it doesn't really fit, so I can set it to rows, and there we go. Responsive design done. Does that make sense? All right, last thing I want to show you is what if, you know, you want to turn on and off certain interactions or parallax scrolling or something that it might be too too much for the, the mobile um, device's processor or something like that? You can turn off animations per breakpoint. So I'm going to show you right here on this lightning bolt go to my um, interaction and right here trigger settings trigger on all devices um, you know what only on desktop and tablet but for phone landscape and phone portrait I'm going to turn them off so that that cloud those clouds is going to stay static they're not going to move when it's on mobile okay so that's a little bit of um, mobile design okay uh... Um, responsive design, I mean. Cool. I th think that does it for for the build. Cool. 1040. Still on time. Hopefully you guys um, un uh, learned a thing or two. But again, go to university.webflow.com to, to learn more about uh, Webflow and how it works. Okay, You can start with a uh, free account to just do whatever you want. And even publish to a webflow.io URL just to see what it actually looks like on your phone and, and, and whatnot. And it's all free, so take a look. Uh, now it's time to get on some questions. Uh, let me get Chip and Jason on the stream. And so uh, let me get my headphones on. Uh, let me just make sure they're... Uh, Chip and Jason. Jason, you there? Oh, I'm not talking with him. Jason, you there? Waiting for Jason and Chip to get on the stream. Um, yes. Awesome. All right. So let me get right here. 
Hope you guys um un uh, I'm here too. Finger two. Uh, can you uh Chip? Can you mute your stream? On getting done. Okay, cool. All right, I was hearing myself uh, hearing myself double, but uh, yeah. Okay. So to help answer some of these uh, questions from the Muse community, I have guests uh, Jason from MuseGrid.com and Chip, uh, who's from the Muse community as well. So thank you guys for being here. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of questions to get through and uh, talking to the live chat. If you have questions, go ahead and either upvote them if it's the same answer as yours or ask it, ask it in the live chat and post it as a question and we'll get through them as much as possible. So the first one... Um, uh, Jason, I think we answered that one already. Uh, have you seen the questions? Uh, have you seen the questions already in the live chat? I, yeah, I, I cruised through them just a little bit. Um, I don't have it open right at the moment. I can open it up here real quick. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, okay. So, so which, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah, so which uh, which one do you want me to go to? Um, let's see here. Whichever whichever one you want to answer, but I see Chip has been answering some in the comments. So Chip, yeah. uh, I'll I'll start with yeah. you, Chip. You were talking about what is it? Uh, yeah, master pages and yeah. and stuff like that. Do you want to um, explain how Webflow uses master pages? Yeah, so it's it's real important to understand that that there's not a one to one relationship between views and Webflow. Uh, as someone who's just coming from years of using views. It's a little bit abrupt at first, but uh, once you get into it, it's a pretty, uh, uh, it's pretty recognizable. So, basically, uh, there are these, there's these, this concept called symbols, which if you've used Flash before, you'll understand it. But they're basically instances. Anything you put in a symbol, think of it as like a real smart group. As you drag it onto any page, that 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 symbol is placed on that page in Webflow, and then if you edit that symbol in any page, it'll update all the other pages. If you want to keep that symbol. If you want to change that symbol only on that page, you can unlink the symbol, and then you can make changes to that symbol that won't be reflected on the other pages. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, it's uh, a different terminology, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that's how uh, Webflow handles it. You had something, Jason? Yeah. Well, well, yeah. So, so just you know, you can maybe think of it like you know your navigation being a symbol. Uh, maybe if you have side navigation being a symbol, your footer being a symbol, and then when you go to build a page, you just drag those symbols out to kind of like architect your page uh, in that way. And then, as Chip mentioned, um, everywhere you make a change from that point forward in that symbol, it'll be reflected across your entire site wherever you've used that symbol. Whereas master pages was this, it's a page and then you reference pages. That concept doesn't, isn't one-to-one -one in that way, just like Chip mentioned. Uh, think of it more uh, as sections or pieces of your site that are uh, reusable throughout, throughout uh, you know, the site experience. Yeah, cool. Hopefully that, uh, where is it right here? Hopefully that answers your question. Who asked that? That was, yeah, that was Chuck who asked that. Hopefully that answers mm -hmm. your question, Chuck. Uh, next one, I'm going to send over to Jason um, because I think you're good at answering, uh, explaining this one. Uh, please explain the pricing model. Uh, <laughs> web, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so this one, um, so with Muse, you obviously have the software. And so you can pay, you know, 19 bucks a month, or if you have the full creative cloud, you pay, you know, whatever it is, 40 something dollars per month or what have you, you have all of this software available to you. In Webflow, you have um, two things to consider. One is the designer. So it's, it's uh, equal to Muse and the software itself. Um, that if you're looking at the pricing page of Webflow, it's the one in the middle. Um, uh, I can't remember what the plan names are offhand. Um, but you pay for the software in order to use the software and to also have um, staging sites by which you can build sites for all of the clients that you're building them for. If you look at that, and then you also look at the team that's next to it, both of those two are fairly equal in terms of what they do. One of them is just a single account where you as a freelancer would uh, create you know, all of your sites. Team would be something like my team. So Chris and I, we have a team account. And so we both 
have access to all of the sites that we create in that team account. So when you look at those two plan levels, those are pretty much the same things. It's just they have different features depending on whether you're an individual or a team. That is separated away from hosting. That concept obviously didn't exist in Muse at all because Muse didn't offer hosting. I, you could argue that Business Catalyst was the hosting for Muse or what have you, but I won't try to bridge that gap. I'll just say that Webflow, you can either export your code out and host it wherever you want, minus some features that Webflow provides that are pretty awesome, or you host right on Webflow, which is what we recommend because you do have access to those features. That is if I'm just hosting a single site. So there's designer and then there's hosting. Those two things work hand in hand if you use both of them in that way. But um, the designer, of course, is the thing that's um, equal to Muse. And I think this goes to um, the next question. Um, where is it? Where is it? Let me scroll up real quick. Okay. Yeah. So Webflow is very flexible um, when it comes to hosting. So Laura asks, can sites be hosted on GoDaddy? And I'll, I'll take this one real quick. Uh, Webflow, you can export your uh, static HTML, CSS, and uh, JS and your inline images, any images you upload to the assets manager can all be exported out of Webflow into this nice zip package. You can unzip it and then uh, FTP it up to any web server that you want and it'll work as is. However, um, with the features like uh, Webflow CMS or CMS editor, uh, client billing and other uh, features, that are on our server, you cannot uh, take advantage of that, or even the two-click um, uh, publishing without uh, FTP. Yeah. So yes, it can be hosted on GoDaddy, but uh, you'll lose a couple of features. Okay. Yeah, Nelson. Maybe just one point to add to that too. Something that you guys recently just uh, announced, which is dropping support for um, web form processing outside that's not hosted with inside of uh, Webflow. Um, there's some ways around that or what have you, uh, but obviously that's mandated by the GDPR stuff that's coming out. Um, maybe not necessarily something you guys want to go do, but the reality is is that it's mandated in that way. So, um, so I just wanted to make that additional note that it's the CMS, the editor, client billing, and then of course web forms processing in that way. Yes. And there's also an, another key point there is that you can still design the forms inside of Webflow. Yeah. So it doesn't mean that you have to go to a completely different forms generator. You can actually design the forms in, in Webflow and then post them to a different URL. And there's a, there's a link there in the answers of yeah. one such example, or of actually a thread that kind of talks about some of that. So. Yeah. And if you, if you guys are Zapier fans, that's amazing, amazing uh, piece of glue, if you will, for web forms uh, in the event, whether you're hosting them even on Webflow or even outside of Webflow. So, but there's uh, several different ways to tackle that one. Yeah. yeah. Thanks guys. Um, let's see here. Uh, does Webflow have email hosting? And uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll take this one too. So Webflow doesn't have email hosting because we want to focus, we want to hyper focus on making a good web design platform, all right? There's companies out there that do email hosting better than us, uh, most notably uh, G Suite, all right? So um, you can point your domain name to Webflow and you can still have your email domain name part of your, uh, as part of your email, but those, what we call MX records, you can point those over to somewhere else, wherever you have your email hosting. So whenever someone goes to your website, goes to Webflow, if you're hosting with us, and if someone's emailing you, it goes to wherever that email server is going. All right. Um, let me think I've answered Laura's about responsiveness. And let's see here. Whoa, Chuck has a long one. Okay, that's about symbols. I don't think there's any new questions. Oh, okay, uh, is there something in Webflow that is equivalent to the plan mode? Oh, I just lost it. Did they got voted up? Is there something <laughs> in Webflow that is equivalent to the plan mode in Muse? Something to show page relationships in a multi-page site? Okay, I don't yeah. know this one. I can tackle this one. Okay. Um, yeah, so, so if you open up the designer in Webflow, um, the plan view, in Muse, which you have this nice visual layout and you got to hand it to the Muse team here that it is pretty slick to be able to kind of see your whole site and the interrelationships between them. Um, but the same kind of concept exists inside of Webflow 
you go into the designer left hand side, it's the second icon down at your pages tab. You click that. And uh, it, essentially what's happening in the plan view is you're just seeing an overall aggregate view of your pages. Now, um, you can see pages that relate to one another and what have you. One of the major advantages in Webflow as opposed to Muse is while it may seem you can have a folder structure in Muse as you're looking at child pages or what have you, we all know using Muse that every file is flat. It's all in the root directory. So there really is no hierarchical opportunity inside of Muse. Well, in Webflow, you can create folders and folders within folders and so on and so forth. So you can still see that relationship. It's just more, um, I guess, a hierarchical as opposed to like a, a what terminology I'm looking for here. But um, it's instead of it being like overly visual and this whole thing that you have to be inside of, it's already inside your designer right there. So you can toggle open folders, look at all your pages. And it even works well with CMS collections because your templates for CMS collections are already in the footer of that pages area as well. So you, it's not like you have to go to three or four different places or even go outside of your designer experience. You stay in the designer experience and see it all right there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I guess, Chip, uh, this is a question from you. And... Um, do you already know the answer to this? What you asked is, what if a page on my site goes viral and one million people come to my site? <laughs> so Nelson, I think you actually have a better answer than <laughs> I, I would have. But I think these are questions that all of us think about mm -hmm. when we're, oh, okay. we're contemplating a move to something like Webflow and using your hosting services. Yeah, OK. So uh, Webflow websites are uh, backed up on secure Amazon web servers. Also, your content goes to the Fastly.com content delivery network, okay? And that's the same CDN that uh, The Guardian uses. So uh, you don't have to worry if your site goes down because it goes viral for a day or two, okay? Uh, but if you exceed your plan limits, uh, let me go to the plan limits real quick for hosting just to show you. Nope, right there, okay? Uh comparison there we go so monthly visits on the basic it's 25,000 CMS is a hundred thousand and then a million on business okay so say you're on the CMS hosting and you go above a hundred thousand uh, I would say or we would say congratulations you know a lot of people come to your site that's <laughs> party. we're not gonna take down your site we're not gonna replace it with a hey they uh, this site has reached its limits contact the admin or something that's sad no we don't want that to happen to you we want your site to be running um, and we're not gonna charge you overages basically we'll just keep an eye on your site if you're consistently go going over your monthly visit then we're going to ask you hey you got to bump up to the business because you're bringing a lot of traffic, which is awesome. Now, if you go above a million, I don't know, pizza party or something. Yeah, throw a party. <laughs> exactly. Mean, man, if you're consistently going over a million, oh, great job. Okay. But again, we're not going to take your site down. Uh, we want you to succeed. So um, we'll, we'll contact you if that happens, but we don't want you to worry if you go above your monthly visit limit. So, we hope your site goes viral. We want you to be the next big thing. Uh, yeah, I think there's some new questions here. I use scrolling anchors in Muse in my menu. Is that an option in Webflow? Uh, scrolling anchors. Oh, okay. Yeah, Wait. yeah. I think I think that I, I think I understand. Basically, they're talking about on the same page being able to go from oh yeah. other with a scroll. So that's built into Webflow. It's a real. Super easy to use, very much like it is in Muse, very easy to use. So let me show a quick ID, right? demo. Yeah. Just like Chip was saying, uh, you, you would use an ID. So yeah. for, I'm showing my desktop right now. So I'm going to click on my first section, and we have this cog, and we have an ID for in page linking. That's what we call it. And I'm going to call this home, and I'm going to scroll down to the next one right here. I'm going to call this one about. And the last one right here, the clouds, I'm just going to call it uh, services. Okay, and then let me double click inside of my symbol for this home. And I'm going to click on this one right here. So this is page section. And those things are just typed for the IDs are already showing up in this uh, drop down menu. So I can click on home 
and for this about, this one's going to go to about, and services is going to go to services, and I am done. So if I press preview, click on about, it does that in-page scrolling. And there we go. Cool. And I hope that uh, answers your question. That was Laura again. Cool. Hey Nelson, did yeah. you did you demo the actual when you're moving the actual uh, the 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 breakpoints around that you're getting a list of the devices that it works on? Yeah. Oh my like, god! You took the words right out of my mouth. That is a, oh, okay. Yeah, 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 literally. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great feature. So oh, man. what Chip and Jason are talking about is if you look at the bottom right, right here where my mouse is, uh, you can see we have these diamonds on the ruler. When you stop at the diamond, it shows you the devices that you're. Uh, that we're mimicking on that uh, screen size. So right there's Apple iPad Mini 2 and 3, Microsoft Surface, HTC Nexus 9, and, and so forth. So yeah, that gives you more detailed information on uh, what you're looking at. But again, it's not the, uh, if you have these devices, I would suggest testing them on those devices um, physically rather than using uh, this as your uh, main truth. You want to, this just takes the screen width of those devices and translates it into Webflow. But um, yeah, this helps you test a little bit faster. And yeah, thanks for reminding me about that, guys. Yeah, that's 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 a good one. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing I'd like to mention just real quickly is that uh, there's just two things about Webflow for me uh, that was really compelling. One is there's a, a series of videos out there that, that uh, Nelson referred to. I think it's the university videos. Mm -hmm. They are the best videos I've ever seen for any product I've ever used. And I've been, I was an original Photoshop beta tester, so I mean, I've been around a while. Uh, and they're just fantastic. And if you want to get up to speed quickly, that's where you go. The other part is if you're a news person, of course, Jason's got a whole series of, of, uh, of kind of news to Webflow videos. We kind of tackle the question of, this is how I do it, Muse. How would I do it in, in Webflow? So that's part of Muse Grid. Um, and you know that those those two things I think are important. The other, the other part I'll mention is that if you're already familiar with CSS or HTML and CSS, this stuff you just fall into this, and, and it'll be real obvious how to use it. If you're not, then there may be a little bit more of a learning curve. So you may have heard that people say that Webflow's got a long a, a larger learning curve, but if you understand CSS. And I'm luckily I've had a background in some CSS. I'm not an expert or anything, but it made it really, really simple for me to jump in and, and make changes and build a website in literally hours. I had like four or five pages up an hour. So it was a it was a great experience in that respect. Nice. Uh, here we go. Uh, I think okay, we have time for say two more questions and then we gotta call it. But again, to the live chat room, uh, if you have any other questions, join the community at forum.webflow.com. And um, there's a lot of people in the live chat room who are in the community who are seasoned uh, Webflow, uh, seasoned Webflow users, and uh, they're already answering your question there. That's how awesome our community is. They want to help as many people as possible because they they see the power of helping others and the power of Webflow. So let's, let's see here. Um. Here we go. Uh, this one, Jason, I'm um, giving it to you. Uh, do we have to scale the images to the exact size? Um, <clears throat> no, you don't. Um, you do have a limit on your upload size, though. So, for example, if you're uploading a relatively large image, I do believe there's like a four meg um, upload limit. You, I mean, if your if your images are over four meg, you probably should be reducing them down to some degree in size, uh, because otherwise they become quite uh, quite large. But uh, depending on how you're using it, especially like a background image or something like that, Webflow automatically creates the uh, media query tags in the source set of the background image that will uh, produce the correct image size based off of the device that you're on. You just upload the image and the sign is in a background image and it all happens automatically. Um, and obviously that's a huge uh, enhancement as opposed to like what you uh, had to tend to inside of Adobe Muse. It was uh, oftentimes the straight images. I mean, they did they would crop them and things like that at breakpoints, but um, you don't get those flicker effects or anything like that as you hit various breakpoints or what have you. So, um, so, so yes and no, um, just not over 4 meg. Yep, agreed. 
Um, let's see here. Jason, you might also want to explain the concept of plugins in uh, Webflow. I mean, yeah, I can touch on it a bit uh, for sure. One thing is, is that you guys haven't uh, t uh, seen recently the announcement of cross-site copy and paste. Man, oh man, that is just ridiculous good. Um, so imagine you have um, a, a set of, well, I don't know, for those of you guys who are familiar with maybe Design Kit and Muse or what have you, uh, we have all these design patterns and you would go into your widgets library and you drag design patterns out to your page across breakpoints. Um, you can do the same kind of thing in Webflow. It's just have uh, your project open that you have uh, patterns already pre-created. So maybe you like the certain layout in this project that you're working on. When you use it over here, you just simply copy it and then paste it over here. Everything just comes in, snaps in amazingly well. So if you if you guys really like that concept, you can create your own. Um, I think some templates use them and what have you as well. But that's an amazing, amazing feature. Um, and what I would also say, too, is that um, I know that the Muse community in large was very dependent on this concept of widgets. Uh, we made them. Uh, a lot of other providers, uh, I think maybe even Muse Gains on here or what have you right now as well, they make them. Uh, lots of guys did. Um, the, 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 the concept of widgets inside of Webflow, I would argue, you probably don't need 80% of the things you needed in Muse. You just need to know how to do it in Webflow. That's it. So um, try to think of several different examples, but um, a lot of the interactions and the animation types of things that you would get widgets for from providers, man, you can just do it right in Webflow and it's pretty amazing. You just have to have the knowledge to go do it. And it's just like anything new. As the first time you picked up news, there was a lot of, you know, first time, you know, things you were tripping over uh, initially until you got comfortable. And then once you got comfortable, man, you're cruising and building sites fast. Yeah. You'll find that the speed in Webflow is drastically faster than anything uh, you would definitely build and use, especially around breakpoints. Yeah, uh, I think one of those examples of what I just showed you, I don't know if you would need a widget for like parallax scrolling for that cloud moving effect. No, you could do that in Muse, um, an example like that. Uh, but again, it's all know-how. It's literally the same way you're doing it. You just have uh, to know how to do it is all. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Um, yeah, so it's already 11.03, and I don't want to keep you guys any longer, but thank you, thank you, thank you so much uh, for helping answering the questions from the Muse community. Uh, Jason from MuseGrid.com, also MuseToWebflow.com. Check out his tutorials there. Uh, let me just show off the site real quick. Yeah, so he has a bunch of tutorials and videos, and uh, some of them they are already free, so you can start mm -hmm. learning the differences between Muse and Webflow. Uh, wow, you already, oh, you added more. I remember uh, there yeah, was we, only we, four. <laughs> we've got about 35 more videos coming, so yeah. Ooh, you're busy. A little, just a little bit, yeah. <laughs> just a little bit. All right, and uh, Chip from the Muse community, thank you. Thank you so much for helping answering the questions. Well, great. Thanks for inviting us. And yeah, thank uh, you. see you out on the forums. Yeah, we'll see you on the forums too. All right. Okay. Have a good day. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Okay. Have a great day. And yeah. Cool, cool. So that was fun. And I know I didn't get to every question, but uh, go to forum.webflow.com. Join our community and ask your questions there. Uh, I want to say thanks to a lot of the community members who are already in the live chat room answering the questions in the live chat right now, like Stu, uh, Brandon, Naweed. Uh, yeah, thank you guys. And Peter. Uh, join the community, forum.webflow.com, uh, introduce yourself, uh, ask, your, uh, ask your design questions, custom code questions, and if you get your question answered, please pass that favor forward and answer someone else's question so we can all grow together. This stream happens every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, and you can find us on youtube.com slash webflow. You can follow us on this Crowdcast, Crowdcast page. You can follow us on uh, Twitter at Webflow app. Also on Instagram, Webflow app. Facebook.com slash webflow. You can follow me at the Pixel Geek on Twitter. And if you need any tutorial help, anything uh, that you want to learn inside of Webflow, go to university.webflow.com or contact the support team at university.webflow.com university contact. 
Fill out that form, and I and the rest of the support team will help you out as fast as we can. Thank you. Thank you so much to both the Webflow community, Webflowers, and the Muse community for being in the live chat room and joining me this week. I will see you next Tuesday, and as always, make the web beautiful. See ya.